Welcome everybody. I'm Jackie Malloy, responsible for projects and communications here at Meaningful Aging Australia. And as we begin today's session, let's start as always with our acknowledgement of country. And as I do, perhaps you could acknowledge the land that you're joining us from today in the chat. Today we stand in the footsteps millennia old. May we acknowledge the traditional owners of the Kulin Nation whose cultures and customs have nurtured and continue to nurture this land since men and women awoke from the great dream. Meaningful Aging Australia honours the presence of these ancestors who reside in the imagination of this land and whose irrepressible spirituality flows through all creation. That acknowledgement was created by Jonathan Hill, who is an Indigenous Australian poet and teacher. Today, unbelievably, is our final webinar for the year, our final all access webinar for the year. And we're ending on a real high. Um, a lot of you won't know about the Spirited Project, but you're going to find out. Um, and for those who are here because you know about it, um, you're going to hear more. And it's something that uh, I think you're all going to find really interesting because the, the, uh, the aim behind the Spirited Project is to empower and give confidence to friends and families of those loved ones living with dementia and being able to provide spiritual care and nurture that emotional and spiritual well-being. So a really fabulous initiative. Today, we're joined by Kathy Lambert and Eleanor Hill. And I'm just going to set you up with some pins to uh, bring you up on our screen. Just add you there, Kathy. Hello and welcome to Catherine Lambert and Eleanor Flynn from The Spirited Project. Welcome. Thanks. Thank you. Shall yeah, I just I'm, hand it over to you, Kathy, to... Um... Sure, yes. Okay, I'm, I'm going to begin and then Eleanor's going to take over from me soon. So I'm just going to share my screen so that you can see some slides. So I'll just do that. So thank you very much for the opportunity to share with you today about the research the Spirited Project is undertaking and particularly how it's relevant to your network. So as has been said, we've got two members of our team here today, Associate Professor Eleanor Flynn and myself, Kathy Lambert. So the Spirited Project was formed in the last two years, well, really the last 18 months, and it aims to gain an understanding of how family and friends respond when they're invited to offer spiritual care to a loved one living with dementia. In doing so, we hope to improve the support offered to these people, especially those who feel anxious about offering spiritual care or don't feel competent. Essentially, we want to identify the skills and the characteristics that might equip people and highlight or maybe provide some training resources. So these needs were identified by the research team and then um, they applied for an extraordinary large research grant from the University of Divinity. The funding of $140,000 has allowed the team to pursue this, this really important research project. The project is not only based in Australia, but also the United Kingdom. And we're working very closely with industry partners in aged care. So from the start, uh, we have engaged with Methodist Homes for the Aged in England, BAPT Care in Australia, Meaningful Aging Australia, hence our presentation today, and also Northern Baptist College in England. And more recently, as the research has progressed, we are now having conversations with Juniper Homes in WA, Uniting Care in New South Wales, and hopefully others as well. It's important for the team to be close, working closely with the people who are at the cutting edge of ministering to people living with dementia. 
So the spirited team is made up of people with a diversity of experience and skills. Our chief investigator is Reverend Professor Renee Erwick, Principal of Whitley College in Melbourne. Also from Whitley is Reverend Associate Professor Daryl Jackson, who is currently in the UK and will be catching up face to face with some of our partners there. Eleanor, at who you will meet in a moment, is associated with Yarra Theological Union. And Reverend Dr. Titus Olaranasola is, um, is a research associate who has a number of research connections which are very useful um, for the project. We also have a research advisory panel for the project and they've been an, and continue to be an invaluable resource You'll see here the list of names. I won't go through all of them individually, but these people are experts in the field from different perspectives and have shared their wisdom and their connection with their networks to assist with our project. So now I'll turn to what we're actually doing. So the first stage was the gathering and analysis of current research in the area of spiritual care for people living with dementia to identify the knowledge gap. The second stage, which um, Eleanor will talk more about soon, is the Delphi e Experts Survey to gather the opinions of those working in the field, of those, yeah, in the field um, of, of aged care. And our next stage is to work with focus groups of family and friends of those living with dementia. And finally, we'll review the training resources that are available and look at where there may be more needed um, or things need to be highlighted for people. So the process began with the team and the research advisory panel collecting articles which examined the care of people living with dementia. This process enabled the team to identify the knowledge gap in the research. From this process, the team has produced two publications so far. The first article written by Daryl and Titus presented an overview of the project and its aims. And this article was published in Zadok Perspectives a little over a year ago now. The second article was a collaborative effort from all the team and it was more a more thorough metasynthesis of the current research exploring spiritual care of people living with dementia. So although there is, there is research regarding spiritual care of people, people living with dementia, um, a lot of it is about how spiritual care is offered by professionals, such as chaplains, counsellors, social workers. But there is a significant gap in how spiritual care is offered by volunteers or family and friends. So this article published in a special issue of religions earlier this year, highlighted that gap. And that's the gap that our project hopes to address. So I'm now gonna hand over to Eleanor who will tell you about the next stages of our project. Thanks very much, Kathy. Um, <clears throat> so having found out that there wasn't much evidence that family and friends provide spiritual care to people living with dementia. We're sure they do, but it's not been written about in articles, I guess. We thought we would ask our experts, so our advisory panel and some of their colleagues, um, to, to tell us what they thought the issues might be um, when family or friends were thinking about providing spiritual care to someone living with dementia. So could I have the next slide, please, Kathy? Um, can you go back to the one in the middle or is it not there? Don't worry. Yeah, sorry, I don't think it's there. Yeah, yeah that's fine. So what, what we did was um, ask them what they thought the issues might be. And they talked about um, what we, we, we developed some points and asked them what they thought. And then we developed 14 questions from the themes that they'd come up with. And we then asked them and we ourselves also asked other colleagues we knew. So we found 36 experts and they were medical, um, nursing, social work, um, spiritual care, chaplains, theologians. So a full range of people um, involved and interested in age, uh, 
older people and their spiritual needs. Um, and these people um, answered all these 14 questions with quite a lot of, not just yes, no answers, but quite a lot of detail. And what they talked about were the top three challenges and the related challenges that people find when caring for someone with dementia, particularly uh, in the home situation where people talk about exhaustion and concern about unpredictable behaviour um, and the grief over the losses of the personality and the relationship with the person um, and their own isolation, the family member, the carer's isolation from family and friends because people aren't involved, don't come and see them anymore. Um, and they, when we talked about um, the, the issues about reducing anxiety and increasing confidence and competence, uh, the experts suggested that spiritual and physical strength um, were really important for carers um, and um, external resources, as many as possible. Talk, and talked about using respite, either people visiting or people or, or actual care, um, respite care and not being guilty about that because you need to have your own resources to continue providing resources to um, people with dementia. Um, then they talked about the, the things that might work if you're um, providing spiritual care. And for some people that would be taking um, their family member for a walk in out in nature and talking about nature and talking about the beauty of nature. For some, it might be listening to music that connects you to that person and talking about that music. For those with a background of a faith-based tradition, it might be a particular set of hymns or music that, that uh, connected them back to that, that, um, those services or it might be particular prayers or rituals such as lighting candles or um, using, using flowers or something like that, that these would also be useful activities. Um, when um, people talked about um, talking to, uh, saying to family members, well, how, how, you, how might you do this and how, how might it help? The, the idea of using short, resources, multi-sensory resources, so things where there was both um, sound and um, perhaps a video, um, perhaps um, chanting. So using resources that, that were available uh, that might be helpful. Um, also um, uh, connecting people back and finding the thing that turned on the light for, for that particular person. And that might be different on different days, but it also would be quite different from one person to another. So trying to go back through that person's life and thinking about what would turn on the light for them to allow them to, to express their spirituality. Um, and when um, the experts were talking about training resources for family members. They suggested that these needed to be brief um, and um, accessible um, so that people could use them, could log in and out, find, see the resources easily um, and use them um, at, at different times when, when they needed help and support. Um, so then um, having done this survey of experts, uh, and looked at all the, the information that we had, we the next stage was always going to be um, asking family and friends who are actually providing uh, care to their family member um, <clears throat> that uh, how they did this in relation to spiritual care. So what we want to do is to set up focus groups. They would be, a, we hope, you know, about eight people in a group um, we think it's probably easiest if we um, work with um, aged care residential providers so that we can uh, perhaps um, get family members uh, who come to visit regularly and, and um, ask them to, to be part of a focus group. The focus groups will take about 90 minutes, maybe a bit longer. Um, we're able to pay members of the focus group who um, come uh, with a, a gift voucher um, to support them and to thank them for their um, uh, time and energy. Um, and we've developed some fairly basic questions, which really are about, you know, what have you done in this? Have you done any spiritual care? what stopped you doing it, what's helped you do it, do it, 
how does the person with dementia react to the things you've done? Um, what do you think would be helpful if if you we could do something that would help you? Um, so they're fairly obvious sort of questions that we want to, to get the information from. We want to um, videotape these um, uh, focus groups if possible so that we get not only the the words that people say, but their sort of interactions with each other. And um, as all of you, I'm sure know, um, body language is really very important in, in how we interact with people in any form of life, but particularly thinking about talking about people with dementia. Um, so that um, we're really keen to see if we can develop uh, these focus groups were in them just at the final end of um, applying for ethics approval, both here and in England. Um, and we were on a Zoom earlier in the week to the people in England to sort out um, those issues um, so that we're, we're very keen to get to, to set these up as, as soon as possible. We hope that from the focus groups, um, the information we get from those um, will It'll be interesting to see if it matches what we got from the experts, if the people say the same sorts of things that the experts said that might be um, that might make easier or make more difficult to provide spiritual care to people living with dementia. Um, and then from that, um, we, we, we have already been looking at the existing training resources. Um, and as um, Cathy said, we, we'd be looking to see if there were some ways we could perhaps adapt existing training resources or if necessary, develop other ones, which would help support people who wanted to provide spiritual care to uh, people living with dementia. And I think that's all I want to say at the moment. And we're both very happy to uh, answer questions. Thank you very much. Oh, that's terrific. Thanks. Um, oh, my goodness. It's it's very exciting to, to have some discipline around, um, around this gap, as you say. And one of the things that you just said, Eleanor, that really it gave me goosebumps was um, finding the thing to uh, that turned on the light mm. because I think um, that's that's like a two way dynamic, isn't it? It's it's going to the person who's living with dementia um, will be connected, mm. of that. but I can imagine too that for an overwhelmed, anxious friend or family member, the sense of accomplishment that they would feel from discovering that light. Mm. Um, I think, you know, that's a really, I've just got this once again, that's a really beautiful thing. Um, and I think the, the, the kind of confidence boost um, that they need to be able to then explore further into providing that spiritual care and making those different kinds of connections perhaps than what they had in the past in their relationship. So, oh. Really, really great stuff. Um, and the focus groups, of course. Um, so if anybody in our audience is um, thinking that they would be or they know someone who would be a good match um, to participate in a focus group, I imagine some of these will be virtual. Is that right? We were hoping that they'd be physical. Um, okay. But, but and where would they take place? Um, we were hoping that they we'd be doing some in Melbourne, some in Perth. Um, okay. We're still, and obviously some in England. We're still negotiating that, and if it means being virtual to make it work, we're happy to be flexible. Yeah. Okay. So at the moment, let's not let's not um, discount anybody. From no, no, no. Region. Never, never discount anything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so if anybody in our audience thinks that they or someone they know would be a good fit for a focus group. You can get in touch with us or you can get in touch directly with Kathy and um, Marnie will put her uh, email address in the in the chat. Um, so that's just gone up in the chat, but you can always, um, you know, loop into Meaningful Ageing as well if you want any kind of connection with the Spirited Project. Um, let's open it up for questions or comments, observations uh, from, from you wonderful people in our audience. You can do that in the chat, or if you want, you can just start speaking. Hi, it's um, Cecil Camilleri here from South Hi, Australia. Cecil. Hi, 
I'm not sure. Uh, now I know why. Right, sorry about that. Um, look, look, a couple of observations or comments, um, whether or not um, you wish me to be on a focus group. That's up, up to you guys. Um, and But I won't be able to travel. Um, will you be looking at, separately perhaps, at the um, the contributions to spirituality by Aboriginal, Aboriginal Torres Strait Islanders and, and cold members too. As you can hear from my accent, I, I am a cold member. Um, um, yes, we're very interested in cold uh, members, people from um, linguistically other than English. Um, that's a particular interest. Um, we haven't um, specified and have we haven't either um, said we definitely want people from Aboriginal backgrounds or we definitely don't. Obviously, um, we would welcome um, people from their background wherever they are. Because it's so high dementia in that uh, cohort and in the cold cohort is so high, isn't it? Mm -hmm. um, coming from the cold, cold background, what I had observed was that a lot of us youngsters were brought up in a uh, um, in some sort of religious tradition, but it, but most of it is, is Christian. Um, but as we grew up and flew the coop, we gave up on, on the religion, then rediscovered it as our parents started getting older and we thought they were missing out on some sort of spiritual care or, or, um, or, or re religious um, um, or, or some sort of faith, which was apparent was missing in their life, not knowing whether it was or not. That's why I'm saying apparent. I personally thought my spirituality was very private and I was very shy to talk about my spirituality. So I took up a clinical pastoral education and then advanced clinical pastoral education, which gave me permission to express myself in my, um, uh, in my, in my advocacy. So I thought, you know, a few, a few observations there um, um, and uh, hopefully it will open up the discussion further. Oh, that's great, Cecil. Thanks for sharing that. Would anyone like to build on on that or offer another question or observation? We've I still think got Australia, Australians generally are a bit shy about talking about spirituality and religion. Yes, and and also, of course, you know, the 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 ongoing um, assumption that a lot of people make. Um, because there's never been an open conversation about it, that spirituality is something that's much bigger than religion, that religion is just one part of how spirituality can be expressed, but that spirituality in itself is a very human experience mm. and, um, yes. and, and, once, and for the right of everybody. Yes, indeed. And, and once I got the courage to talk about spirituality, during clinical pastoral education sessions and the advanced clinical pastoral education sessions, I now uh, always ask about pastoral care or spiritual care every time I inspect a mental health facility or disability facility. Yeah, exactly. Really important part of mental health and physical health, of course. So we'll keep our um, keep open. Here we've got. Uh, someone in the chat, so let me just have a look at that. I find that when speaking to many family members about spiritual care, the most common answer I receive is mum or dad doesn't go to church anymore. That's, you know, from Tamara, thank you. That's probably um, a very, very common response. Um, very common response. And in Australia, it's probably not even um, necessarily uh, like it's it's really around God. It's like no, I no, I don't. That's not for me. Mm. Um, Catherine McMillan, hi, hi Catherine. It would be great to include some information on how to overcome fears or feeling inadequate. Some will feel they say they don't have the right to say. Some will mm. only want a priest. Yeah. Yeah, that's so true. That's Hello there, it's um, Christy Zaparo here. Um, I work with Anglicare. And, um, yeah, one of the biggest hurdles I feel that 
I'm consistently trying to cross is very gently um, educating people, whether they be friends or family members or even staff, um, as to what spirituality is and that it is so much wider than whether a person has belief in God, um, whoever that God might be, um, that we're all spiritual by very nature. And yeah. it's far more about the meaning uh, that people can um, attribute to different things in their life, the things that give them purpose and help them to feel connected that really... Um, help me as a pastoral carer to link in with what's important to them yep. where are they at what does turn that light on um, and I think that's probably an issue that we're always going to have uh, mm -hmm. much as me wearing a little cross in my role sometimes people can say to me oh thank you no. I'm you. Um, I don't want what you're selling. Thank you. That's right. But then I can explain, look, please just think of me as a friendly face around the place. Yeah. I mean, there, there might be a time when you're feeling a bit low emotionally, um, you know, and I would always love to sit with you and help you through that time if it comes. And it's amazing, you know, what does in fact happen. But I feel like I'm constantly trying to normalise things and try to get people to see things in a slightly different frame. And um, I think we should be encouraged that that's really not a problem, that's an opportunity for us to speak out um, and to help people where they're at. Yeah, thanks, Christy, that's great. Um, just got something else in the, in the chat here from Julia. Um, as some may know, people who can no longer speak can often sing. Mm. I've had a few sung conversations. That's such a, a great, wow, sung conversations with former choir members or congregation members who sing how things have been this week to a well-known hymn tune or psalm. That has just blown my mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I knew the singing part, but I didn't think of singing a conversation. That is really, wow. That's so good. That's a beautiful idea right there. Oh, I love that. Um, okay, it's 129, everyone. So that's it. We're, we're really at, at the end. Um, so once more, I would encourage you to stay connected with the Spirited Project um, via Kathy's email in the chat, or as I said, you can always loop in to Meaningful Aging and um, ask for contacts. Um, and keep in mind the focus groups. And if you have even a sliver of an idea that you might be right or you might know someone, please share that information. Um, and what else can I say? It's our last all access webinar. So, um, you know, what I, what I would ask is if you're so inclined and you'd like to get in touch either again through the chat, I'll leave that open for a little while, um, or by dropping us an email. If there's, if there's something you've particularly enjoyed this year and would like to let us know, please do. Um, if you've got any ideas of what you'd like to see in next year's program, please let us know that as well. Um, and thank you for, for joining us today. Thank you very much, um, Eleanor and Kathy. It's been really wonderful and we'll look forward to having you back um, to hear part two of the project. Yeah.